in my hometown of El Paso, Texas, uh, for a few weeks. Uh, needed to get out of L.A. for a little bit, so we, we packed up and drove out here to see some family and stuff. Got all quarantined, tested, and then felt good enough to come visit family, so we're doing that now. Absolutely, man, absolutely. And I'm really glad you are able to do that. I think it's important to to get away for a little bit and yeah, spend time with family because it must have been difficult at first uh, not being able to do that. Yeah, for sure. So it's been really good to be here for the past few days. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. And, and that's interesting, you know, what what are um, what are some of your biggest inspirations outside of music? Obviously, we'll talk about God is Gone and obviously your career, uh, but what are you, some of your biggest inspirations in terms of, you know, family, things like that? Because that's always really important and I think it's important to uh, to for people that are fans of yours and people that are fans of the band to understand that, you know, you, you obviously have a lot of motivations outside of music as well. Yeah, I mean, the, there's a lot of motivations, I, I think, starting to talk about family it's an interesting um word because i didn't really grow up with much family my um my mom passed when i was young and my brother raised me and and so i always clung on to uh, my good friends families i have two uh, best friends to this day since i was five years old and i clung to their families and i stayed at their houses and i lived with both of them as well and now having my own family, I, um, I, try to t- I try to, you know, um, literally give my kids the opposite, obviously, of what I had. And, um, and so it's been, so family has, be, has always, the word family has always been very important to me because I've always been trying to create it. Um, and, you know, I kind of finally have landed there. So it's kind of nice. That's amazing, man. That's that's really wonderful, you know, to, to, to share that as well. And I think, like, you know, it's good that you can have that inspiration and motivation uh, from those people around you. And, you know, obviously talking about um, musically and your own kind of career and stuff, you know, that, you know, in terms of your career and development, how have you found, you know, maybe it's because of family, maybe it's because of other things. How have you found you've changed and developed as a person through the music you've made, through, you know, at the drive-in through Sparta, now with Gone is Gone. And, you know, how have you sort of changed and developed over your career as a person? Well, you know, I think, I think you know, and, and, and at the drive-in, we were, you know, we were young. When I started touring with At the Drive-In, I was 22, and I was hungry. And I was hungry to prove myself to um, relatives that thought I was crazy for dropping out of college I was, you know, and friends that thought I was crazy for, you know, yeah. um, leaving a lot of possible careers outside of music. And we cut our teeth together. And to this day, you know, we're family, you know, to this day, you know, I always, I always giggle and it makes, it makes my heart tingle. You know, my, when I get a text from Cedric that says, what's up, big bro. And, you know, <laughs> even though we're the, we're the same age, it's just like, I've always been you know, I've always been that guy that like wanted to take care of my friends and wanted to take care of people around me. Maybe it's because I didn't really have much of that. And without the drive in that, you know, that's, that's where we became family. And, and Sparta was, um, a lot more of that, a lot more years in all honesty, which is kind of crazy when you think about it, yeah. even though at the drive-in felt like a lot longer. And now we've added more years to at the drive-in. But Sparta was a lot of, you know, a lot of uphill battles and a lot of work, even though we had labels and had all that that at the driving did in the, in the beginning. But it, it made me, I think, a better, uh, quote unquote, businessman. And, 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 you know, because I kind of took care of that kind of stuff in the bands um, back in the day. And it's and then, you know, and then we fast forward to, you know, Gone is Gone and, you know, um, a project that I'm going to announce in the near future that I'm doing that I'm almost done with. Like I, I always, I'm always trying to push myself in the sense of that. Like, you know, you know, some people, um, you know, want to be drummers forever. I've always wanted to be in a band, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I want, I want to be in a band. I, I, I don't want to play drum. I, I don't dream of playing drums forever. I, I dream of being a composer, a songwriter, and a arranger. That's always been my dream. I just ended up because drums were my passion at that point. Yeah. And, and so now I'm, I, I feel like I'm making this huge transition to, you know, I've always done it. I mean, I've been composing since, you know, now 2007. But now with Gone is Gone, my whole plan 
an idea for this record and these songs that people have been hearing and uh is you know i sat down with troy sanders in my backyard the day we were starting work on this record now last year um and i told him look we need to make a record that can be played if all four of us are on the on the room and we're at our typical instruments i'm on drums you know you're on bass uh yeah. Excuse me. You know, VL's on guitar, Mike's, you know, on synths, or, but this, or, and then I could turn it around and play the whole record on my synth and my Octatrack yeah. by myself. And, and he kind of looked at me and he goes, I don't fully understand how that's going to happen because I'm not that guy. I come from a different world, but I trust you guys and I trust you. And now we're making a record that I, I'm very excited about. You know, you know, right now on, the record we're doing, you know, I think two of the, two of the, the, the 11, 12 songs that we're hoping to finish, um, in the near future have live drums. Yeah. So it's like, you know, I, I'm, I'm really focusing on production and, uh, you know, sequencing and arranging and being more than quote unquote a drummer. And it, 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 the thing is like, I mean, I love playing drums, but again, I always used to say, from being a young kid, I, I don't dream of being a drummer for the rest of my life. I dream of being in a band for the rest of my life. Yeah. Um, and so that's been really exciting, that big transition. So going back to your original question of, of like, how does that change you as a person? Um, you know, coming with age and coming with a lot of experience, you know, you're, if you do things correctly, I think you come out of it with a lot more uh, positive energy and a lot more... Um, uh, you know, you know, you're you're humbled, and at the same time, you know, you could do your job. So, people, you know, you you hope people uh, support your decisions in the band like you you would support theirs. So, it's been really exciting transition over all these years. You know, absolutely, man, absolutely, it's exciting for me to hear that, and I, obviously, hopefully, people will get behind the the record when it's done. And I guess you've answered a little bit of my next question, but in terms of gone is gone you know it sounds like you're really pushing yourself in new ways as an artist well, you know is that right do you feel like you've uh, how how it, how is this pushing you how is gone is, is gone pushing you in new ways as a as an artist a creative and again as a person i suppose well i like some point you know days before i had that conversation with, with troy sanders mm. um you know i crossed my fingers that the rest of the guys would be into like um you know, trying to do a record that could be hopefully played in every kind of way from acoustic to electronic to one person to four people, you know what I mean? So, um, and, and, and I think everyone kind of like kind of stepped into those shoes and really pushed themselves. I mean, um, the, the, what I'm, especially what I'm really excited about is, you know, Troy Sanders is, is pushing himself in ways that like is so exciting to me. You know, he comes from two other bands mm. that he's he's one of three singers. Yeah. You know, he's always in a band with a lot of singers, which is amazing because it, 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 it produces, you know, especially obviously in Mastodon, it produces amazing music that you're like, wow, there's so many ebbs and flows because there's a lot of different singing, you know? Yeah. Um, and my goal with Gone is Gone, like, like I tell Troy, I go, you're you are the singer. There are no singers. There's backups <laughs> and there's yeah. ideas. There's backups. There's ideas. You know, Troy Vial writes a lot of melody, uh, but you know, most of the time, Sanders sings it. And yeah. So it's it's and I go, you are the singer. Do whatever you want. If you've dreamt of sounding like the Cure one day, like this is it. This is the band to do it in. You know what I mean? So. Um, and so it's been really exciting to see everyone just go, okay, I'll do anything then. And it's like, okay, yeah, exactly. That's what, that's what this band should be about doing anything. Yeah. You know, we don't have, we don't have to, you know, it's, we were, we were a, a, a COVID type band before COVID because, you know, we, we hardly were able to ever tour because of everyone's schedules. Um, you know, the, the hottest production time, uh, in in Gone Is Gone's path is the times when Mastodon at the Drive-In and Queens of the Stone Age were all on tour. Yeah, so we've always you know we've we've always been you know that quarantine band anyway. We've always had to pr- like we've always had to produce music in small amounts of time or remotely, um, 
and it's like and then sometimes ha- someone has to take the complete lead and the complete reins of the project to keep it going while some other else while another person is busy or whatever so it's been for us doing like the you know the you know kind of the quarantine record like a lot of people are doing is like it's only the only way we've ever worked as a band you know yeah so it's pretty exciting to us you know yeah it's, it's quite interesting to reflect on that actually man that's that's a really interesting thing of, of being a, a quarantine type band before it was even a thing that's a it's pretty yeah. pretty interesting um obviously you you've, you've put out a couple of tracks obviously everything is wonderful just came out and you uh, came up with no one ever walked on water last year uh how how if you look back at your previous work and the, the obviously the self-titled and echo location uh, how do you feel uh, you know this, the band sound is now and how, how it's progressed and how you've been able to progress it I suppose uh, from the beginnings of, 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 of Gone is Gone as a band where do you sort of see the sound now um, you know I think I think especially with the EP we had uh, we had an idea back in the day of making it into more composition stuff yeah but we didn't have time to think about it so when we actually got in the room and uh, Troy VL and I and Mike wrote the music for the EP. Of course, you put Troy VL and, and I in a room, and you're gonna get like heavier <laughs> music. You know yeah. What I mean? um, yeah. We didn't have we didn't have time to think about it, so we just kind of let let our old chops come out. And then again with echolocation, a lot of that stuff was created on the spot. It was the first time I had ever jammed with with Troy Sanders. We sat down. Uh, the first day of recording and uh, jammed out the song echo location the first day. Mm, yeah. Um, and so like we were, we were like, we became a rhythm section right then and there. And so, and then like songs like gift off echo location, Troy VL and I literally jammed that song out within 20 minutes. And that drum take is literally my jam. Yeah. Nice. With him. Yeah. So yeah. I never, I never even got to actually get a take. So it's like, so it's, that's the, that kind of pressure and that kind of excitement is really neat. And then now you transfer into the idea of, but again, with those records, it was really hard to play those songs live, Mm. you know, if everyone wasn't around. And so that's why Gone is Gone's played four shows, you know, so it's like, um, so it's, that's why my idea with this, with this record and how we're doing this record is exciting to me. It, the, my idea might never work, but at least it gave us a notion of trying to do the record in a different way. And it's really opened up everyone's creative juices for sure. Absolutely, man. And talking about those creative juices, I really like the visual element of, of Gone is Gone, the videos and stuff and those kind of visuals. How important is that for you, you know, having that visual element, having those kind of cool creative, creative videos and visuals for the band? Well, you know, it, 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 there was definitely a conversation before the, the video for, um, everything is wonderful like of like you know everyone was doing what i called the, the zoom video yeah and and all that stuff and and it was brought up by someone uh out you know like that maybe we should do something like that and um i remember vl and i were very very um opinionated in the sense of that no we we are not that band and in about you know three weeks everyone's gonna be sick of zoom and sick of hearing songs played on split screens and so, um, and, and it did happen, you know? So for us, we were like, let's just take another t- stab at it and go back to being a, uh, you know, it's hard to be mysterious. It's hard to be secretive nowadays and no one wants secrets nowadays, but my favorite bands had secrets. My favorite bands, um, were mysterious, you know? And I like that about our band. We still kind of keep some of that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's call it old take on things because it's just like, you know, but that's how we felt. We feel about after driving as well. And we've always had, we've always, always had that moniker of like, we don't want people to know everything about us. Like, like that's that's boring. You know, I was like, I don't want my favorite. I don't want to know what my favorite artist has for breakfast personally. You know, like yeah. I just don't. Um, but again, I'm a different generation. But like, um, but at the same time, like I like mystery music, and and so I think that's why you see visuals and videos like we've been producing because. We all come from that same vein, you know. 
Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely, I think it's re- it's just a really nice other aspect of the band. And um, just taking you back to uh, to the sort of beginning of the conversation where you looked at your background and where you've come from, I, I get to work in my day job with a lot of young people that struggle with you know the mental health. Maybe they've come from negative backgrounds. They haven't got families around them, and they want to be musicians and artists and stuff like that. They might look at someone like yourself and think, oh, "I'm never going to get to where Tony is. I'm never going to um, succeed to where." you know, uh, gone is gone around the driving hour. And I wanted to ask you about how you define success and what does it mean to you? Uh, what does success mean to you personally as an artist? Well, I, I think it all started, success for me as an artist was, it started, I wanted to be, if 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 you know anything about Metallica, I yeah. wanted to be the back cover of Master of Puppets. So I want people to look that up. Uh, I want people to look at the back LP cover of Master of Puppets. It's Lars looking back at the camera and he's playing to a full crowd on his, you know, um, steel drum set. Nice. And I was just like, that's that's success to me. And then I jumped into the punk rock world with with uh, you know Omar and Cedric. And the first time I hung out with Cedric, he handed me a tape that had Fugazi. Nice, uh, nice. Hoover. <laughs> Indian Summer, like all these, you know, Rites of Spring, you know, quote unquote emo, quote unquote hardcore, um, and and so I was like, oh, so success is different in this world. You know what I mean? Mm. I grew up on major labels and metal, and I don't hide from that. Some people kind of change their history, and they say they never liked certain things. I don't. I came from the metal world, and then I got introduced to the punk world, and then the punk world, at least in our hometown here in El Paso, knew me because it's such a small town they're like as the guy that played in metal bands and i was just like yeah but i'll tour harder than all you punkers you know? <laughs> yeah you know, like, and so when i joined at the drive-in i was just like we're gonna go until we cannot stop and to our detriment we did that and some of that is um i take the blame for um and and so the thing is i had i felt like i had to prove because i was that guy that thought i would never get to playing to more than you know, 50 people and I was going to do it just like you're saying any kid right now um, that's starting a band or he's in his 20s and trying to figure out, should I continue going to university or should I, you know, and I, I just say, if you're going to do it, do it now. Yeah. And, and it, it's going to, it's going to, it's going to suck most of the time. <laughs> but, if you, but if you have that dream, like, like, I, you know, my fondest memories, you know, we always laugh when we were like hanging out on the buses on these last after the driving runs and we would laugh that, um, yeah, we would laugh that, um, you know, like that we were hanging out on a bus and we never dreamt of that, you know? Yeah. Uh, and so it's like, it's, uh, it's really interesting to, to be, uh, in any one of those things. And those are, were all dreams and, and we were just lucky to get to that point. It's crazy that you're able to look back on that, man. Absolutely. A uh, couple more questions, and before we finish now, man, obviously you have got a project coming up, and I know you're sort of keeping it under wraps, and I I, I appreciate your your uh, sort of desire to keep it mysterious. So what can you tell me about this new project that you've got? What are you willing to tell me? You don't have to tell me everything, but uh, you must be pretty excited about it. So tell me uh, what's, what's next for you and, and a bit more about that project, whatever you can. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing is like, you know, Right now, you know, at the driving is on a long break, and then as 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 a band, and then you kind of click, you let's enter COVID, you know. Yeah, and like, so yeah. Every, everything's elongated for everybody, and Gone Is Gone is what it is, which is you know, an art project that works sometimes, and but everyone loves it, so it never really um, stops, you know. Because Troy Sanders always says it really well. He always says. It's a project that none of us really need, but we all want. Yeah. Uh, and so it's, it's so true because the, the time and effort we put into this project, like, is none of us need to do that. Like, we just love doing it. And so for me, because I'm a planner and because I'm always looking, you know, trying to look five steps ahead, like, I was just like, wow, like, I don't know where my musical future is, you know? Uh, and so for me... Uh, last summer, I found a record that I had started on an iPad app um, years ago. Oh, wow, and, okay, cool. My idea was like, my idea was like, oh, I'll do something with this someday. And I literally forgot about it. Like, I usually don't forget about music I have. And it was really uh, funny that I did. And I was 
cleaning up some hard drives in my studio, and then I, I found this, you know, uh, you know, file that had you know nine tracks on it, and it was just like just weird sounds, pretty much. That they weren't songs, um, and so I decided to uh, like make them songs slowly, and so I, I, you know, I, you know, again with my notion of like, like don't play drums on these because drums can come, comes easily like do everything else yeah so i pushed myself to like uh writing all the other parts and everything and like i have done but like now at the sense of i'm in the helm of, of like com- like almost complete control per se um i mean the the stuff i could tell you it's like it's, it's literally a 180 from anything you've ever heard from me okay um, Cool. And, uh, and uh, the good news is that uh, you won't hear me singing because you don't want to hear that. <laughs> so uh, so it's like, the, you know, the only thing I can't do and refuse to try. So that's what I'm really excited about. And, and hopefully you'll hear more about it in your future. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. And, and uh, obviously we're in the UK and uh, we might not get a Gone Is Gone tour. I'm sure we'll see at the driving again and hopefully this new project. But um, just for the people in the UK that have followed you, have you got any particularly great memories of being in the UK and a message for, for fans of yours and, and listeners of Gone Is Gone in the UK? Oh my God, I have a million great, uh, uh, you know, feelings and, and vibes from the UK. You know, some, you know, when you, I mean, you know, um, when a band breaks in the UK, it's like you feel like you're on the top of the world because yeah. all the magazines make you feel like you're on, on the top of the world until they hate you. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so it's like, it's, it's, so yeah, I mean, I got to experience, you know, my first enemy cover, you know, our first Karen cover there, our first club show in London, you know, that we were like, you know, we sold it out to a hundred people. Like those, those feelings you never forget. The days of press that you get to be in this really, you know, in a hotel room, and you're like, oh my god, I am doing UK press. Like it's a big deal because, yeah, you know, some of my favorite bands, you know, came out of that that side of the world, and 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 those places. So it, it, to me, it's like I'm getting, I'm living my part of history that, you know, that you know, Zeppelin and the Who and and many bands after that experienced and, and, and I got my little piece of it and uh, that uh, playing Jules Holland oh you know, nice playing, you know, yeah uh, I, was it called TGIF I don't know if that's they used to that, uh, they used to have that yeah they used to have that TJ TGIF yeah TGIF right TGIF yeah, yeah. Like, so playing like you know that, I mean that's crazy for us like we got to I mean there's a million great like stories I have from the UK and you know how the how the rain kept us inside all the time and made us stronger and made us more of a family because we had to stay inside and talk and, yeah. and share stories and you know and it's crazy it, it, so it's it, even though it's like weather even influenced how I started falling in love with the UK you know so it's like because it's in the sense to me it's like it it brings people closer it brought all my bands closer you know um, and so it's it's really so there's a lot of great vibes from the UK that I've had. I've been lucky enough to be, to be touring there since I was, you know, 23, 24 years old. So there's a lot of memories. Mate, you're the only person I've ever I've ever listened to say how grateful they are to the British rain. So uh, that's uh, that's a good that's a good uh, good memory for sure. I actually I actually just just thought of one I want to squeeze in about Gone Is Gone because I was listening to um, listening to Starlight in the Car the other day and some of the earlier stuff, and I was thought this would be an incredible on a soundtrack and I wanted to ask you obviously I don't know if you're a big movie person but if you could rip out um, the soundtrack of a movie that you love um, and replace it with Gone Is Gone or soundtrack a particular movie uh, is there anything that you think Gone Is Gone would work on is there anything that you'd want a soundtrack with that band oh my god yeah well that originally that's you know the whole idea of Gone Is Gone you know yeah. Mike and I came from the trailer world and we were having a ton of success with trailers and we had this one trailer that would not stop getting used i mean that's a good thing <laughs> yeah and, it is uh, and then we always said like god we should put guitar on it and maybe make it a real song um because then you know it had trailer drums you know a, a total different vibe and the first person i thought of is troy van lewin because we always said we wanted to work together and we've always been very very close friends uh for many many years since like 2003 and and so he was my first call and and so yeah that was the original idea of gone is gone was to do that we just it's been hard to get that because everyone's trying for that so now we we feel like 
you know, if there's a is a if there's a pipe dream, I would rip out the score from Blade Runner. And, nice. And Dugan, and Dugan is gone, uh, or Dune, and Dugan is gone. You know, so it's like um, those are probably my top two right now in my head. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. I, I was thinking of some the other day. I just think it's it's beautiful music. So you know, so you know, definitely set for a soundtrack, man. So hopefully you'll get to do that one day. You'll get to to maybe, maybe that's the future for the band is more soundtrack stuff. You know. Yeah, that'd be amazing. For cool. Sure. Cool, man. Right. I'll leave you to enjoy uh, your time with your family. Thank you so much for your time today. I really, really appreciate it. And I look forward to catching you down the road, man. Thank you. And I, I appreciate your time as well. And thank you for the interview. And thanks for supporting the band. Of course, man. Of course. Right. See you on the other side, mate. Take care of yourself. Right, you take care. Bye, take mate. Care of Bye.